Starbase has entered into 2024 with fireworks, but not those fireworks, these fireworks. See what I did there? Now, it's been quite a bit since our last proper Starbase update, and in that time, we've seen Booster 10 and Ship 28 conduct static fire testing. Plus, we have vehicles for flights far into the future in work at the production site, and Mega Bay 2 finally gets its first occupant. Howdy, Star fans. I'm Jack Byer, and this is your Starbase update. Now, over the last few weeks, we've had a ton of vehicle movements and testing. So let's begin with Booster 12 and Ship 30, who recently made the trip from the production site all the way to the Massey outpost for cryogenic proof testing. Before their transport to Massey's, each of these vehicles was lifted up onto its respective thrust simulator stand, which, as the name implies, will allow SpaceX to test the forces of the engines pushing against the aft end of each vehicle during these cryogenic proof tests. That ensures that these two vehicles are properly proofed, not just against any leaks or pressure cycles, but also that they can sustain the forces from their engines firing underneath. If pairing of ship with booster continues with the current trend, then these two vehicles could be slated for Starship's fifth flight although they could just get scrapped in the middle of their lives and we'll never see them fly. At this point, with Starship version 2 coming, who knows? Since its move to Massey's, Ship 30 has undergone two cryogenic proof tests, while Booster 12 has yet to undergo one, so we'll have to keep our eyes open and stay tuned for when they test it. Next up in the long list of vehicles being moved around, we had Ship 29 moved out of the high bay and into the new Mega Bay 2, marking the first time a vehicle has occupied it. As we had mentioned in one of our last Starbase update episodes, this mega bay looks to be pretty much dedicated to ship construction and work, and it's got its own engine installation stands and access locations. Sometime after being moved into mega bay 2, ship 29 was then lifted onto the first ship work stand inside of the building. Sadly, this also means it'll be out of view as it'll be tucked into a corner of the structure. But hopefully, next time ship 29 is out and about, It'll have its engines installed and ready to be tested ahead of Starship's fourth flight. With Ship 30 and 29 moved out of the high bay, we had a rare view of the inside of this now relatively empty structure. You can see in this view the scaffolding installed on the right-hand side of the building, which has been in use for a while to process vehicles. And in fact, that view did not last long, as Ship 32 was then moved from the turntable where it had been stacked over the last couple months, over to the back right corner of the high bay. We assume this will be to continue processing and readying it for flight, but again, with the impending arrival of Starship version 2 at this point, can't really be sure what will happen to it. With major work completed for Mega Bay 2, the giant LR-11,000 crane at the production site was lowered down, and we're probably going to be seeing it either dismantled or reconfigured. It had been used to build up the structure of the new Mega Bay, and more recently it had been used to help bring up equipment and other hardware to the roof of the structure. The roof is now more or less completed, so it makes sense to move this crane away. But where will it go? We're not sure. Now, with Ship 29 and 30 out of the way, Ship 31 was able to be rolled back into the high bay to continue outfitting it for testing and flight. With Ship 31 now inside the high bay, SpaceX has been able to install the ship's aft flaps. Teams are also starting to work on getting heat shield tiles installed on the gaps between the vehicle's major sections. When you think about it, it's pretty crazy to be seeing this much work on vehicles that are destined to fly so far into the future, but it really does bode well for those of us that want to see way more Starship action in Starbase in 2024. Now, before we get to what's been going on over at the launch site, we need to talk about a certain cursed vehicle that has been getting quietly worked on over the last few weeks. That's right, it's Ship 26, which has been, for some reason, having additional stringers installed? I have no idea. Yes, the ship we all thought was going to get scrapped right away is somehow now having more work done on it. Worst of all is that we don't even know why. I mean, generally, we don't know why SpaceX does what they do on other ships, but at least sometimes it's obvious what they're doing. Why would SpaceX want to install stringers on the outside of a ship? It just does not make sense. So if you have any ideas, put it in the comments because I'm all out of them. On top of those stringers being added, Ship 26 now appears to be getting ready for a lift onto the engine installation stand at the Rocket Garden, which is curious 
given that it already has engines. At the time of recording, the ship has been moved out from its parking spot at the garden and the LR1750 crane there has picked up the squid to be attached to it. If Ship 26 gets lifted onto the engine installation stand, it could be to remove the engines from this vehicle and finally scrap it. But knowing SpaceX, it's probably just to install more stringers on the outside. Who knows? All right, now we get to talk about actually useful vehicles. And believe it or not, SpaceX completed all major engine testing with both Booster 10 and Ship 28 last year. There was an inkling that it could happen given the speed at which SpaceX likes to move, especially lately, but it was still surprising nonetheless. On top of that, the end of the standalone test campaign was not with one, but with two static fire tests. Right before Christmas, we had a spin prime and static fire test of all of Ship 28's engines. And we almost had a static fire test of Booster 10, but that test was aborted shortly into propellant load. During the following days, we had a lot of tank farm testing, which potentially indicates the abort could have been due to an issue with the tank farm itself. During this testing, the road was open, so Sean was able to capture some rare in-person views of the orbital launch mount venting and the tank farm going wild. Then Mary got an overpressure notice. The road was closed, the orbital tank farm spooled up, and we were all very happy because that meant Booster 10 was going to have a static fire test. But out of the blue, the suborbital tank farm spooled up as well. Ship 28 got frosty, and somehow we got a static fire test out of it. It was in fact a single engine static fire test that SpaceX later said demonstrated a quote, flight-like startup for an in-space burn. It's a little bit of a weird statement because it kind of sounds like what they did with Ship 26, where they also ignited a single engine and simulated a deorbit burn to come back from orbit. In fact, the countdown and behavior of Ship 28 during this test was pretty much a one-to-one -one match of what we had seen with Ship 26. So could this mean that Ship 28 will be the first ship to do a real orbit, do a deorbit burn, and then come back to land? Well, sorta, of, maybe, kinda, we don't know. But it really wouldn't surprise me if Ship 28's flight follows essentially the same profile as Starship Flights 1 and 2. For some, it may seem obvious, but then again, Ship 26 also performed this test, and it doesn't really look like it'll go into orbit anytime soon. Performing this test is just not a straightforward indication that this vehicle, in particular, will be the one doing that. It's not even an indication that it'll go into orbit, either. For all we know, Ship 28 could still go into a suborbital trajectory, then turn around and do another shorter burn in space that simulates what it would have to do to actually deorbit. But without needing to really go into orbit. You know, because a massive vehicle like Starship floating around in orbit uncontrolled is kind of a bad thing. This would also mean that Ship 28 could, if this actually happened, which we have no idea if it will, re-enter earlier in its trajectory. So perhaps it would splash down in the Indian Ocean rather than the Pacific Ocean. But again, none of this is guaranteed. So it could in fact be something we'll see on a future vehicle one of the ones that's, you know, waiting back at the production site to be flown. Thankfully though, this day of testing did not end with that Ship 28 static fire. That's right, Booster 10 conducted an all-engine test with all 33 Raptor engines. This one was quite remarkable because it lasted for like 10 seconds, which hasn't happened before. Prior full engine static fire tests had run for something like five seconds or so, but never up to 10. On top of that, SpaceX went straight into this test without performing a spin prime test or anything prior to it. Crazy to think that within six weeks of Starship's second flight test, the orbital launch mount was able to support a full test for 10 seconds of 33 Raptor engines firing without any apparent issues. Certainly hats off to the teams at SpaceX and it really shows how much better they're getting at all of this testing and even flight as they do more and more of both. With its test campaign now complete, Booster 10 was moved back to the production site and into Mega Bay 1. And during that move, the SPMTs it was on had to thread the needle in between the barriers that had been installed for the Star Factory construction and a parked car that wasn't exactly in the best of places. I think it's safe to say that the owner of that car will probably think twice about parking it there again. Booster 10 not only went back to the production site, but it was also moved onto the work stand at the back corner of the Mega Bay. And here, teams will have the chance to do more work on it and ensure it's fully up to spec before flight. Ship 28 also appears to have completed its test campaign as it was removed from suborbital pad B and moved back to the production site as well. Not only that, but it was moved back without the crane lifting points on the nose cone, which 
already puts the vehicle in a good position to receive its remaining heat shield tiles. Once back at the production site, Ship 28 was lifted onto the turntable that Ship 32 had been occupying just a few days prior. And like Booster 10, on this turntable, Ship 28 will have its chance to get all the little minor things and remaining work done to it to ensure that it's ready for flight. And when will Flight 3 be? It's hard to say still, but it certainly seems like we're getting close. While SpaceX completes work on each of the vehicles, we can assume that in parallel, paperwork is also being completed in a similar fashion to the last time. So first we'll have to see whether SpaceX has completed its mishap investigation or not, and so far we have no details about that. Rest assured, we'll definitely report on whatever SpaceX or the FAA say as soon as we know. Another thing we'll have to see completed is work on the launch site. Since testing is complete and launch may be a few weeks away, SpaceX is now taking the time to do a lot of extensive work on the tank farm to remove the old water tanks, either partially or completely. As of recording, SpaceX has removed the original vertical water tank that had been unused due to leaks encountered on it a long time ago. And other two vertical tanks that had originally been built for methane were then converted to be used as water tanks. While the original water tank was just the 12 meter diameter shell, these other ones do have the 12 meter diameter shell but they're covering up an actual 9 meter diameter tank inside. The shell of one of these methane tanks has also been removed as of this recording, and preparations are underway to remove the inner tank as well. We don't know if the other tank will also be removed, but we'll definitely keep an eye on Starbase Live to see if that happens. While the original water tank wasn't in use, the other two converted methane tanks were still in use, so between now and the next flight of Starship, we should see hardware being installed to replace the functions performed by those two. I'm sure SpaceX expects all of this work to be complete before the next flight of Starship, and they wouldn't have started it unless they thought they would complete it beforehand. In the last few days, we also saw a new oxygen pump being brought in to replace an already existing one. That's right, yet another pump replacement. What is going on with this? SpaceX seems to be going through orbital tank farm pump hardware the same way I go through bacon. Scaffolding is also still present on some of the new parts of the tank farm, so it's going to be interesting to see if SpaceX decides to perform more work on them, as perhaps some of these new added components may not have been fully worked on yet. Next up, a place where work is still ongoing, in fact it never seems to cease, is the orbital launch mount. The dance floor came back, and scaffolding has been installed on the deck of the launch mount once again. We don't know what work SpaceX may still have to do on it, but either way, this is another watch item before the next launch. Oh, by the way, during testing of Booster 10 and Ship 28, we also saw the arrival to the port of Brownsville of a launch tower segment and tanks that had been barged over from the Cape. As of the time of this recording, the tower section is still at the port of Brownsville, but the two tanks have already been moved to Massey's outpost probably for the tank farm that's being built up at that site for future ship engine testing. And as a final note, since our last Starbase update, we got the addition of a shiny brand new SpaceX sign at the suborbital launch site. Recently it was lit for the first time and Mary got some characteristically excellent shots of the sign with Ship 28 in the background on Pad B. So as you can see, the last few days have been chock full of action despite the holiday season and SpaceX is definitely not slowing down. 2024 promises to be an even more action packed year and we'll be covering it all as it happens thanks to your support. So thanks for watching, we hope you all are having an excellent new year and as always don't forget, be excellent to each other.